All right, this is a continuation of um, a video I made the other day, and today I'm going to expand slightly on what I said before. Um, the main point that I think is really important is that thinking that the world is overpopulated by humans does not mean that you want to get rid of people. Um, I happen to like people a lot, and um, when, you, when you raise the subject of overpopulation, then a lot of people immediately jump to the conclusion that you are pro-abortion and pro-eugenics, um, and you're some kind of Nazi sympathiser, um, when nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I see things in terms of our ecological footprint. We rely on the natural world for almost everything. You know, clean air, clean water, our food, um, and our sources of energy, which, you know, still today are fossil fuels to a very large degree. Um, we burn all this coal and oil. We we really don't have much of an alternative when it comes to transportation and getting food to people. And all the stuff that we consume um, requires a lot of infrastructure and shipping and air transport, freight, trains. Um, some of that is becoming electrified. Um, that's no bad thing. But um, it also, when it comes to responding to Jordan Peterson, um, I can't help noticing that, that, that there is a huge um, polarisation among people who are interested in these things, people who are on the internet. Um, and a lot of the time it seems to be split down political lines. So when I talk about um, global warming and climate change, a lot of people automatically assume, oh yeah, you must be one of those liberal lefties. Um, and the truth of the matter is, I'm not political at all, or hardly. You know, I, up until recently I really n knew very little about politics. I didn't have much of an interest. That's changing slightly, I'm becoming more interested and involved. And there are aspects of the right and the left that I gravitate towards. Um, and it also, when you examine the words um, liberal and conservative, um, and try to map onto what they actually mean, um, you know, I'm very much pro-conservation, the conservation of nature. That would, would that make me conservative? Not necessarily. Um, I'm very much opposed to conservative organisations like the Heartland Institute, which um, are basically lobbyists for the oil industry. Um, I don't think that's good at all. I think we should leave as much oil and other fossil fuels in the ground as we can and try to draw down carbon from the atmosphere um, by increasing the plant life. This is something I'd like to go into in much more detail in future videos. Ideas I have about how to sequester large amounts of carbon. I mean, we're talking gigatons to be able to um, offset the effects that burning such huge amounts of fossil fuels have. Incidentally, while I'm on that subject, um, there's a video I saw um, earlier this morning um, which comes under the description of biomimicry, and there's a lady who, I need to look at my notes here, Janine Benius, um, made a very interesting video. I will attempt to put the link to that video in the description, but basically what it shows is a 2006 animation made by NASA looking at um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the concentrations in particular areas. So it's looking down at a map of the Earth and carbon dioxide, when it's higher, it sort of goes red and purple. When it's lower, it's green and blue. 
and it shows over the course of the year. Um, the starting in January in the northern hemisphere, you know, huge amounts of carbon dioxide in the air milling around, basically being exhaled from human activity. And then as you get into sort of April, May, June, July, the summer in the northern hemisphere, a lot of that carbon dioxide is sucked down, it's drawn down by plant life, and that's like another way of visualising the Keeling curve, which is that graph that um, shows the level of carbon dioxide creeping up um, but every year it sort of goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's the summer in the northern hemisphere because there's so much more plant life in the northern hemisphere um, that the increase of carbon dioxide, it's over 400 parts per million now, um, it sort of fluctuates by, I think it's three or four parts per million per year. Um, so as, going back to this right left confusion um you know you have liberals who are associated with the left i mean I, I personally think that labeling something right and left is a bit odd and uh, kind of misleading and confusing um but liberals liberty liberty freedom i'm very much pro liberty and freedom um but obviously i know that these days the um, whole idea of big government versus small government versus um, free market capitalism, they're split up, you know, between the political right and the political left. Um, I'm not a fan of big governments. I'm certainly not a fan of the nanny state, as we call it in this country, where there are increasing amounts of regulation trying to control every little thing you do um, and um, you know basically undermining common sense which is another thing I'd like to address as I go on making these impromptu and largely unrehearsed videos um, but anyway the last one took a long time to uh, upload, this will too, so for the time being I'm going to sign off and perhaps make something else in the next day or two. Thank you for watching and see you next time.